Welcome back to Squawk Box this morning. The Anti-Defamation League is announcing a new partnership with PayPal to defund hate groups. I want to welcome Jonathan Greenblatt, National Director and CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, uh, to the program this morning. Why don't, why don't we explain to the audience what it is exactly that you're trying to do here? Sure. Well, thank you for having me on this morning, Andrew. So the ADL, as we've talked about on your show before, is the oldest anti-hate group in the country. And we've been focused on studying extremist individuals, organizations, and movements literally for decades. And our experts in our Center on Extremism are some of the best analysts in the U.S. on understanding groups across the ideological spectrum. PayPal is a really good example of responsible tech. And they're one of the leaders in the online financial system. So together, we are collaborating to better understand how extremists exploit online platforms to fundraise, to move money, and to enable some of their illicit activities. We've been working with PayPal for years, and we're going to help them to better understand and learn, again, how extremist groups and hate movements are trying to leverage the financial system so we can disrupt those activities and create, again, a safer and more cohesive web. Okay, but just to understand this, is this simply a research effort or is the ultimate goal, I imagine, to effectively defund them, which is to say that PayPal would effectively turn off the spigot or at least turn off the ability for them to fundraise using PayPal? That's correct, Andrew. So certainly a big part of this is how can we disrupt the ability of extremists from those who marauded through the Capitol to those who are beating up Jews in broad daylight just a few months ago, to other racist and hate movements, how can we stop them from using services like PayPal, from spreading their hate and funding their illicit activities? So PayPal specifically sees as a responsible company a need to try to put an end to this. And they've been at this for years, so this isn't new. Our job at ADL is to use our expertise with better access to their systems so we can monitor what these groups are doing to stop it once and for all. But Andrew, it won't end there. The goal is also to share what we learn with other companies who are dealing with some of the same challenges, as well as with law enforcement and elected right. officials, because we need a whole of society strategy if we're really gonna put an end to extremism and hate. Jonathan, you may know that I've long thought about trying to use the financial system to deal with all sorts of issues that are uh, that we're confronting in society. But one of the things that's happened over the years is anytime anyone's raised the idea of using the financial system for the purposes that you're describing, there's been huge financial blowback. And I'll, I'll just give you an example. There were a number of banks after uh, the Parkland shooting uh, that decided they were going to effectively stop making loans uh, to uh, gun uh, manufacturers. Um, and that became a huge political issue uh, with several uh, and uh, Republicans effectively saying that they were going to make it very difficult uh, for those companies, uh, effectively uh, in terms of how they were going to be regulated and the like. And so I I'm curious about how you think about that, that dynamic, that political dynamic, the, the private sector jumping in, in many cases in a way that the public sector won't, and yet they won't because there are people on the other side of the argument. It's a fair question, Andrew, and I've admired your leadership in your columns and over the years on this issue. And I think you're right in terms of diagnosing that the financial system, which makes so much of our economy work and society function, has a role to play. Now, in the current environment in which we're living, where everything is politicized and people seem so polarized, you're right that there is some risk here. But let's be clear, there's nothing political about pummeling police officers on the steps of the Capitol, right? There's nothing partisan about beating up people because they're wearing yarmulkes or defacing black churches or some of the other activity that we've seen. And I think people on both sides of the aisle can agree that when extremists exploit these kinds of systems, we all suffer. Now look, if you walk into a Bank of America with a neo-Nazi armband with a swastika there and you say, hey, I want to hold, I want to open an account, the company has to choose whether they work with you or not. That's not my decision at ADL. But I think it's our job to help uncover what's happening so the companies can ensure that their systems aren't used for illegal purposes. Some systems, you guys were talking about Bitcoin a bit earlier. Things like Bitcoin are very ripe to be and vulnerable 
to be used by extremists because of the way those technologies work. But the mainstream banking institutions and financial systems, they have a kind, they're required to behave with the kind of transparency. Right. And they owe it to their shareholders to make sure they're not allowing extremists to exploit Jonathan, their services. Jonathan, one, one of the issues, and, and you've debated with me and you've debated with Joe, uh, has been the issue, and Becky, over the, over the years, is this issue of freedom of speech and what can be said, what can't be said. And one of the things I'm curious about is whether you think that the financial system should be getting involved beyond even some of the debates that you're talking about where it's, where it's absolutely clear uh, what the hate crime, if you will, is. I'll give you one. Right now, there's a huge debate on the online platforms uh, around the spread of misinformation around vaccinations in America. Hugely controversial issue, yeah. right? Yeah. What would happen effectively if the banking system decided to cut off some of the, either the individuals or organizations that are spreading this information? They wouldn't consider it misinformation, but this information or misinformation, depending on wh where you stand. Is that the right approach? And I ask it more in the context that there are a lot of business leaders in the financial industry and others that are watching us right now that I think are thinking about what their role is supposed to be in all of this. Yeah, look, I think it's fair to say that CEOs are being asked to step up in ways we've simply never seen before. But people in the banking system or the financial system, Andrew, as you know, have already been at the lead of trying to be more responsible and proactive. I think about what Larry Fink has done at BlackRock is just one example. And Dan Schulman at PayPal has been outspoken on these kinds of issues for years. But I simply don't think it's a freedom of speech issue when you talk about, again, extremists using systems like PayPal or Venmo or others to move money that the mainstream economy won't allow them because it's illegal and it is extremist. So we've got to, I think, keep our eye on the prize. This is about disrupting the ability of extremists from across the ideological spectrum. It's not about deplatforming any political group, but those people who would break the law, we've got to break their ability to use finance for evil. We've got to fight hate for good. Jonathan Greenblatt, uh, always good to see you, and uh, we look forward to uh, following your progress on, on this initiative. Thanks.